also you can watch and see in the northern part of Sweden too. So you have to take that opportunity if you've got the possibility to visit us. And there you can sleep in an ice hotel <laughs> inside, inside the ice and go by reindeer in the morning. But you have, of course you have to have good clothes, but if they're good clothes, no problem. So uh, our capital is Stockholm. If you look on our universities in the west and part of Sweden, the distance is about equal to Stockholm, to Oslo in Norway, and to Copenhagen in Denmark. But Europe, Europe is, is in some way, of course you know a lot of countries, a lot of different languages, but there's also small distances in one way. It's one hour to Berlin with flight, one hour to London with flight, two hours to Paris with flight. So it's such take more long time to go to Sao Paulo, maybe two, three hours or something. Three hours. Three hours. So it's uh, Europe a very small distance. Have you been? Some, some of you have been at least. Uh, our uh, university is a governmental university, and we almost have just governmental universities, two or half private. And otherwise, we have just governmental universities, and we don't pay fee, as you don't need to do in the federal universities. It's the same situation. All Swedish students don't have to pay fee. Otherwise, our our university is a typical middle-sized university. We just talk about, of, of course, the mongoose. 500 employees, you have a lot of professors. But we just talk about full professors, what do you call it, professor titular? Ah, professor titular. We just talk about that. We don't talk about other professors so much. <laughs> Sweden, 9.6 million people. How many do we have in Rio Grande do Norte? Five, six. Oh, in three. Three. It's uh, like nowhere in population. <laughs> a little bit. So the Nordic countries are very small in population. But we have a big area. What is typical of the Swedish nature is that we have a lot of forests, a lot of lakes and rivers. It's very common with lakes. We have lakes everywhere. You know, uh, this is made partly dependent on uh, the ice age. During the ice age, we had one kilometer of ice above Sweden. So therefore, when the ice left, it stayed a lot of lakes. We are a part of the European Union. Nordic weather, as you probably understood earlier, snow in winter time. All lakes are with ice. We can make a hole and go fishing if we wish. Some <laughs> Walk on the ice, it can be like Jesus a little bit. Oh, walk on lakes. Mm. <laughs> but uh, also, some crazy people in Sweden like to take a sauna, make a hole in the ice, and take, and take a fast bath. <laughs> Otherwise, we have uh, the Swedish language, as I mentioned before. In Sweden, all people speak English. But our mother tongue is Swedish. This is depending on if we are a small country, of course, we have to have to have a possibility to communicate. Therefore, of course, English is very important. So even the bus drivers can communicate, and also in the normal shops. So therefore, it's some Brazilian student that has been in Brazil to say it's, it's easier in Sweden than in UK or in US. Maybe depending on we don't talk so fast, we have a little bit smaller vocabulary. So it's very easy actually to stay in Sweden, and it's very safe. We have about 40 universities. Otherwise, we are a constitutional monarchy. We have a king, and we have a queen born in Sao Paulo. Queen Silvia is actually born Brazilian, but the king don't have anything to do with the management of the state. We are a democracy, and we are the king. And they have actually no influence, but they have some subsidies from the from the state, and they represent Sweden, of course. 
when they are foreign guests, and when they are uh, going abroad, and things like that. And uh, some people also like uh, it's interesting to hear about. Oh, it's a real king and a real queen and a real crown princess and so on. Some things that fascinate. Some Swedish people don't like the king, but it's open to say. Do you have a course of movement that want to take rid get rid of it? But in general, I think most of the people, Swedish people like to have a king. We have uh, we didn't we didn't join the euro. We actually had a referendum whether the Swedish people feel confident to keep the Swedish krona. And we are happy with the Swedish krona. It's no problem. We are actually doing well. So, uh, Professor, I mm. have a doubt. Uh, Sweden belong to Euro, European Union, but uh, it's not using Euro. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. We are the, right. Actually, we had a referendum. And the uh, Swedish people voted against the euro. And I think uh, it was depending on that the Swedish people want to be a little bit more independent. If you have, there are some problems with the euro. If you have, if you are in, in Germany, maybe the euro is good. But if you go to some, uh, like Greece and <coughs> Italy, maybe the euro is not so good. So there are some uh, problems with the euro also, and this was what the people, Swedish people thought. You can never have the total equal, equal situation, depending on the language, and people don't want to move, and so on. So, uh, do you know what is the ratio? Between the Hiaks. One Hiaq uh, is about three Swedish kronen. Twenty? Three. Okay. Yeah. Please feel comfortable to train you, practice your English. <laughs> it's not my mother tongue either. <laughs> Svenska. China, 
also a very big company. Otherwise, Sweden today have a high education level. We have a special mentality and a very special type of management, I would say. Swedish management is very much very flat. Swedish management gives the people more to take responsibility. So I don't say what you do. I tell them that the goals, what we, what we like to receive, where we want to go. But that is more up to you. So I don't tell you exactly how to do or what to do. This is very much the sweet yeah, way of, of management. It also differ a little bit concerning the most common way to manage. And also one special thing is also the gender equality. Sweden is one of the highest ranked concerning gender equality. For example, in Sweden today, if you've got a child, it is expected to be made to take half of the time in the home. And even the, the bigger companies support that. They want you, they, if they know if you're satisfied with your family situation, you will work harder and take a harder responsibility. So it's no problem. Actually, the younger generation, it's not completely, you know, the men, the female stay at home a little bit more, but not too much. And also we have a special rules in Sweden that you will have a salary, not 80% of your salary during the first year of the, of the child or both. So, so you don't have, to, you can keep your salary and take care of the child's first time. And after you can return to work. So today, we are one of the world's lowest, at the one of the world's lowest levels of poverty in top of human development index. We have very high taxes. And this is accept, accepted, I would say, among the people. So they, don't, they knew that it will not be corruption, that it will go to a welfare system. And I would say that Sweden, have, Sweden is, in one way, to say that we have a more functional market economy than US has. But on the same time, we have a welfare system. And on, the, and on the same way, we take care of the environment. So it's, so it's possible to create good economy on the same time as if we have a welfare system, and then on the same time as we have a good environment. Some people say, you cannot have a good welfare system, then you will have a crazy economy. We have to skip the nature because of the economy. But this, this is not needed. Education free, health healthcare is cheap. You pay 200 Swedish crown if you got a cold, but on the same price if you make a heart operation. <coughs> healthcare? Mm. Is healthcare free? No, you have to pay a fee, as I said. 200 Swedish crowns per day if you're in a hospital, but the same price if you got a cold or make, have to make a heart operation. But we think it's good to, I think it's good to have a fee, otherwise you will do all this. And we will see some people. And I would say that also we have a clean environment. <laughs> we have also a lot of music. Probably you maybe knew some of that. Today, uh, they are active worldwide. And the few I speak to, Papa and the Fox said, the most famous one. Mm -hmm. so we are actually exposed lots of music, and they also uh, are producers for, like, for example, Madonna as a sweet producer, yeah. and things like that. <laughs> But it's easy to, but something that makes people uh, a little bit confused. Sweden was actually the poorest country in Europe during the 19th century. Poorest. Much more poorer than Greece or, or uh, if you look on uh, the 
pray, Lord. Actually, one fourth of the Swedish population immigrated to the US, depending on folk, mainland folk. So it was Ireland, Norway, and Sweden, which was which has the most part of the people there. And it was mainly agriculture. And you can imagine to, to have agriculture in a Nordic country. A lot of stones, ice in the wind. <laughs> so we're concerned. Not so good of possibilities actually for farms. But the older people have to live on it. Maybe 15 people in a small cottage without central heating. So it's really changed a lot. People moved to the cities, consumption was low. But the state started to subsidize, take loans to make a good, uh, a good infrastructure, then invested in. We had a good parts of possibility to hydropower. So they made very smart investment in infrastructure, in hydropower. In mines, in creeks, both energy and timber, and people start to move to the cities. So, and also they made people very early literate. So, it's been free education, independent of if you are rich or poor. I think also this was a success story. To give, of course, you have smart people independent on your background. Mm -hmm. And if you give all people the possibility, of course, you will have more educated than to make a progress for the whole society. Actually, if you look on our cities, uh, the city center is about 105 inhabitants. Soccer is very important. Yes, for us. Also, in Sweden, actually. And ice soccer, if you have seen on TV. Have you seen ice hockey? So we love ice hockey in the winter time and in summer football. Yesterday night, did you watch the best team of Brazil? <laughs> <laughs> Some good players in Barcelona, and that's why they PSG. But PSG lost depending on the lack of the Sweden. Ibrahimovic should have been Brazil. Ele começou uma coisa engraçada aqui para o Ibrahimovic, vem do bairro pobre do país. But we have a good soccer team. Some time, some years we are number one. Okay. So we number one. Some years. This year we are leading. <laughs> this was actually a little bit. It's actually one of the big Brazilian papers they talked about. Rose, Suecia, Asidade, Campia, da Limpeza. They compared with the... Uh, Veja, yes, it was in Veja. They compared with, uh, with the Napoli as the worst example, and Burros as a good example. E a cidade de Nápoles, no sul da Itália, na ilha da Sicília, né? Se eu não estou enganado. Então, é a cidade mais suja do mundo, por outro lado. Então, a cultura latina, vocês conseguem entender um pouco o que acontece conosco. Eu não vou falar muito sobre o sistema de gasto de gasto, mas em Sweden, em geral, e em Brasil. O Brasil foi, na verdade, o pioneer para começar a redução de gasto para hoje. We don't send any, almost nothing to landfill. 0.4%, 0.4, less than 1% go to landfill. We are recycling almost everything. 99% is recycled and used for some benefit for the society. So we do recycling.
recycling, we do biogas, we also do combustion to produce heat and electricity and cooling. We don't have to look on details. This is a, 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 roughly how Europe looks like. Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, Sweden, Austria, Netherlands, Denmark. Almost have nothing that goes to land for the Formerly Eastern Europe sent almost everything. But as well, countries like Portugal sends a lot to land for Spain, United Kingdom, even France sends a lot to land But the people in the north have a close to land for more or less. And this, of course, has to be the future. If you imagine the increase in uh, consumption level, double consumption every 10 years without start to recycle, is of course not possible. Then we will have a lack of the most important earth metals that you need in computer science. You get a lack of earth metals. Therefore, we have to recycle. Otherwise, we have to close down the modern society. So I, I skip this. I will talk a little bit of this in this lecture for the, in another class. But uh, we have had a lot of drug, of driving forces. But I, will, I think I will take a little bit in the, in the last lecture a little bit more about sustainable waste management. So I will present a little bit about about an engineering tool that we are calling life cycle assessment. <laughs> Probably you have some course in sustainable development. Yeah. That is mandatory. Have you heard about the concept of life cycle assessment? Someone? No? The course would be, I have hmm? the course, the course for this students would be ahead. Okay. Later in your education. Mm -hmm. To pick berries, to pick mushrooms. And this is something that I continue to do, even if we don't need today. We are rich today, but we don't need. But we like to take care of the nature, go fishing, picking mushrooms, picking berries. And I think, therefore, we started early with this green moment. I think a little bit, and also a lot of people who lived in small cottages, maybe with a cow and a, and a horse in the same house in the old time. So, so I think we have been very close to animals and nature in general, even if the, it's very much changed today. You know, uh, people live in it. It's just, I think it's less than one, two percent of the farm. So uh, all, all people work in, in uh, service or uh, industry, more or less. A lot of people have a uh, mind. <laughs> I think in some way, I think in some way it can be independent. <coughs> but of course, you have people that don't care. Of course, you have also of people that don't care. But I think we have a good, if you don't recycle, we use it. Of course, we can, we don't recycle every plastic. <laughs> but then we send it, for, for example, to combustion, to recover energy. And I think we have a good, many good systems. But and I think 50, 30, 40 years ago, of course, it was not necessary. But today, today it's necessary. Ready, Professor. Okay. Thank you. Which year of studies are you in? Third or Third year. Okay. Actually, this is actually a tool that has been increasing in use in uh, industry. <coughs> For example, you know Volvo, Vol Volvo trucks. And they are actually using this to, to look on possibilities 
to debrief the environmental effects. And what is LCA? LCA actually studies the environmental effect during the whole life shape of the project. Sometimes we look just on the production or just on uh, the use of the product. But sometimes we can do some optimizing if we don't look on the whole life chain. So life cycle assessment is an environmental tool where you start to look on the cradle, where you extract the minerals, and where you end it by recycling or disposal. To study the whole way, and this is different in some ways. <coughs> If you look on LCA in a general way, is that LCA will study the environmental effects from a product during its whole life cycle. From the cradle where raw materials are extracted from the natural resources. If, if you look, for example, on nuclear energy, oh, it's it's so clean, clean, it's no problem, we control the emissions. But if you look on the cradle of the uran, maybe you have a very bad extraction in Russia. And you have a lot of pollution in the surrounding of the mine. And we are happy in Sweden with this imported uran. We are running nuclear energy that are bought from Russia. Then we don't take care of the extraction of the minerals. Maybe the most environmental effects are not during the use of uranium in the nuclear reactors. It's after when we just store the plutonium, or maybe before when we extract it during the mine. So therefore we have to take the responsibility both from the cradle to the grave. That's the idea about the dismantle, to look on the whole life chain. So the strength of life cycle assessment is that it studies the whole product system. And we can look on LCA. It's also a tool in eco design. If we can minimize the environmental effect of a product, we of course have to study the whole life chain. If I put a lot of effort during manufacture and skip some other stages, then you put a lot of money and you will have a small, small reduction of the total environmental effect. Maybe it's much better to put the money there to reduce the environmental effect in another place. So it starts with the extraction, manufacturing, destination, maybe transports, and around again. So, what can LCA be used for? It enables us to avoid the sub-optimization that may be the result if only a few best processes are focused. The results of LCA are related to the function of the program. This is very important. This can be services, transport software, hardware, or process materials. I will discuss, discuss that further. LCA is an engineering tool, but it is also a multidisciplinary tool due to the fact that LCA also studies the impact of the natural environment. It makes calculation on the product system with, uh, with the environment and, and environmental effects. So it's really multidisciplinary. Uh, can, can you give us an uh, example for LCA applied to software that you develop?
Yeah, you also in services. Of course, you can. Uh, it depends on. Uh, it also depends on uh, transports. For example, if you compare to, if you have distance meeting or, it's a lot of things that can be involved. can look at the more details later. This is for example in uh, if you are if you have a building, if you look on when we build a new house, we have of course used a lot of resources, a lot of raw material. We use water, we use land. And we have this raw material People use construction materials. We use building products. We have the use. After we shall refurbish it and demolition and recycling. So you have also, of course, a whole life chain, even in buildings that you have in 100 years or 50 years. And you have extraction of raw materials, land uses, and a lot of emissions. So, for example, you can buy LCA, check if it is the best to use concrete or wood. Can you start it? This is environmental preference, as an example. So, to summarize, LCA studies the whole product system from the cradle where the raw materials are extracted <coughs> from the natural resources to production and use to the grave that is possible. So for example, look on a, on a cop. What is most critical for the environment for a cop? Is it in the production of the car or is it with, with the use of the car? Probably the use, yes. Yeah. Uh, then you of course have to look on how to minimize the consumption of fuel. Can we switch or can we switch the fuel to a more environmentally friendly fuel? So we can look on this, this thing and maybe of course we have to have a good enough production line. But of course it's in the case of a car, of course it's more important maybe to reduce the white. This was a Volvo Notice, for example, is their start. The most important thing is to reduce the white. Then you will have a reduction in fuel consumption and so on. As I said before, the strength of LSA is that it started the whole product system. This is something. Something that we have to discuss. The results are related to the function of the product. If we, should, if, if we shall compare different detergents, I have two detergents, A and B. Which shall I choose if I shall do the most environmental choice? What do we say? What is the function of a detergent? To clean. To clean clothes, for example. If we shall look on, can I choose one kilogram of that, that one and one kilogram of that one and compare it? If I have two detergents, A and B. I have one detergent that I call A and one detergent that I call B. How shall I compare them? That one with that one. Hmm? How shall I compare? Yeah, it's to minimize the environmental effect. I, my idea is to choose the one that has the, the most less environmental effect, the smallest environmental effect. How shall I, how can I compare them? Can I choose one kilogram? Is this okay? What 
going to say? You have to consider the number of calls that you feel like Exactly, exactly. I have to look on the, also the possibility of maybe A is much more effective. Maybe you just need 10 grams to have clean, clean pills with this one, and you need maybe 30 grams to have clean pills with this one. So that, therefore, of course, mass is not fair. So what you can choose is can be, for example, one kilogram of clean pills. Then, it, of course, it, then it will be fair if I choose how much mass of this determinant does I need to produce one kilogram of clean pills. Then I can start to calculate. How much of the different different content of the different? Then I can start to, to do my life cycle. I have my washing machine. I have the production production line. What this type of minerals does I need to produce it? Produce this detergent. I have the transports. Maybe I produce it in USA. Of course, I have to include the transports too. And during the washing, of course, I have some pollution to the water. Then I can start to look which is the best. I'm taking the idea. You understand? Please ask Brazilian people, no more ask a lot, but this is <laughs> Do you have any questions? Of course, it has to be one kilogram of, of clean laundry. It's not fair to <coughs> it's not fair to volume. Therefore, it can be, and of course, it also depends sometimes a lot where you produce it. If you have a big transport, so here we have the final disposal out to the water, mainly to the water, and now you have extraction from the nature. Here you have the cradle, or here you have the grave. If you look on the floor, you know, uh, you have relatively often wood floor, haven't you? It seems to be relatively common in Brazil. And that's why, also in Sweden, we have a relatively good amount of wood, wood floor. PVC also new has been used. It's a little bit declining, but still there are used PVC for flooring. How shall I compare a wood floor with PVC as an example? Research running in, in recycled PVC. But if I, if I take a look on the function, what shall I use as a functional unit? In this case, we choose one kilogram of clean laundry. I have also A and B. In this case, A is A is, uh, for example, wood, and in this case, PVC. And I want to compare those floors with each other. So 
so I can make a fair functional unit. Now, and as you notice, sometimes it's not the best to choose mass or the volume. Sometimes it can be a great unit, like clean laundry. Which type of unit do you think that we can use here to have a fair comparison? Square meter is, but is this enough? Square meter has to be included. One square meter of flow. Something more? Maybe the, the number of years that it will really work. Perfect. The lifetime. And here. One square meter of floor and here. Maybe the wooden floor you can use for 10 years and the PVC floor for five years as an example. Of course, you have to double the effect. And then we can start to calculate. In the same way, extraction, you are taking out forests, or you are taking out up oil to produce the PVC. And of course you use some oil in the forest industry, and you have a transport, and you have a sewing machine, and so, and so on, and so on, and so on. And if you recycle, and it's possible to recycle, of course it's changed. Is it possible to recycle 95% in a good way? You will have another result if you have to send it directly to a lab. You notice it is here we start to calculate for example you have a lot of emissions then we can, can calculate for example the greenhouse effect. How much greenhouse effect is created during the extraction? How much greenhouse effect is created during the transports? How much greenhouse effect is created during the use? How much greenhouse effect is created during the disposal? Then we can minimize the product to create the less of greenhouse effect. So, it's, we have the possibility to evaluate all emissions in specific environmental effects like uh, acidification, nitrification, and diff different types of environmental effects. Climate effect is, is of course on the agenda very much today. But of course, we don't want our uh, river to be totally polluted. I mean, of course, we have environmental effects that we like to get rid of, in any case. Even economical and social aspects can be included. Sometimes we have some problems. Maybe. This PVC creates the worst related to green effect. And this maybe has the worst impact on natural resources. Destruction of rainforest, for example. Which shall I choose? Natural resources. I want to keep my. I want to keep my uh, rainforest. No. The greenhouse effect is the worst. What should I choose? If it's sometimes it's easy, you can see that this is the worst in every aspect. But sometimes it can be difficult. 
this case maybe is the worst related to natural resources, and this is the worst related to green also. Then of course, it's not so easy to decide. But, but then we can evolve economical aspects as one tool to choose, or social aspects. Willingness to pay. This is something that uh, some, uh, I think, all of us have used that. Willingness to pay. How much am I willing to pay to keep the rainforest? How much is I willing to pay to keep the temperature increase with two degrees? And then you can uh, make some social social study, you make some uh, statistics of how much people are with it. And then you're involved in this conclusion phase. What I also would like to mention is that uh, are you studying uh, about standards? Sorry. Are you using standards in your studies? Yeah, yeah. No. They are trying to see drawing standards, for example. No, by the ISO, ISO standards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is also There are standards how to actually make a good life cycle assessment. What is expected to be included? This is actually the framework. If you look on the framework, we first of all has to define the goal. Why are you doing this life cycle assessment? This is the school. And after this, <coughs> I start doing inventory. Of course, I have to find lots of data how much of wood, how much rainfall, how much land use, how much emissions, everything. 
there and there and there and there and there and there. This is lots of calculation, lots of calculation. I have to find data on every transport, on every extraction, from the use, from the disposal, everything. And you can imagine that that is a hard thing to do. Therefore, they have created a lot of databases. So you have a lot of databases where you can find all the data needed. And this is it's, it's actually increasing a lot, the number of databases involved. And then you can have a summarize. You have the sum, you would have a sum of carbon dioxide. This life cycle creates so many kilograms of carbon dioxide. So many kilograms of water, so many kilograms of nitrogen oxide, etc., etc., etc. So this is what we are doing in the, in the inventory, is to summarize all the emissions, all the use that we have done. After After we had done the inventory, we have to make an impact assessment. So what is impact assessment? Impact assessment is actually when you interpret for example, it's not, it's just not just carbon dioxide that has an effect on the greenhouse. It is as well, for example, methane gas, which is maybe 20 times roughly larger effect than carbon dioxide has. So therefore we can recalculate all emissions to the same effect. Then we can see how much greenhouse effect this will calculate, and this will of course also create greenhouse effect. But then we can see easily, if you let just look on the numbers, it's difficult to see, but if you recalculate it to greenhouse effect, then we can see which is the world related to greenhouse effect. After we do the interpretation, of the life, different life cycles. And then we can look on which application. It can be directly involved in product development. When you as mechanical engineers ought to construct something, of course you have to reflect on the environmental effect. can be used in strategic planning for many things. If, the, if we have to do a pre study, then we can think in the long run we have to start to avoid using some types of wood. But we have other types of wood that could be as good for the furniture. Then we can choose a little bit strategic how we can make this company more green in the long term. And as well marketing, of course. This is all that we use today. Or something else. Questions? <coughs> yes? The life cycle, uh, so do you need, uh, does it get a lot of uh, seasonal changes, variations, for example. In a year yeah. I have a lot of food, but I can't use it, but in another year I don't have, but I can't use some. How should I consider this variation? Uh, this is, uh, of course you have to use a lot of statistics when you are, uh, if you are going deepening in a life cycle interpretation. So, they, so you can uh, you use the variation in the interpretation. But of course, in this type of course, it's not possible to, to 
But uh, I agree. It's a good, good thing. Further questions? What about, can you follow the English? Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> so uh, probably I just listen to English lectures in English. Normally, are you, have you classes in English at the university? Oh, or no. Just yeah. before? But how do we practice your English today? <laughs> when it comes some crazy Swedish guy <laughs> talking on, <laughs> on TV, of course you have all the Americans. Mm? Then you can look for a look on one effect, and you can see. Then you will have a coefficient that transforms methane gas. Then we compare our, everything with carbon dioxide. So all emissions are transformed to the effect of carbon dioxide. And there, of course, this is natural sciences, chemist or biologist or so, such a thing that have evaluated this coefficient. And then it's just to do an Excel calculation put uh, the, the mass and, uh, and put the coefficient and then summarize. So this is easy. Okay, it will take five minutes so I can drink some water. Okay. Uh, Thank <laughs> you. 
I am interested uh, to learn about how my product affects the nature and where. We just to understand, and then I can see the effect is not inside my production unit, it's actually the transport that affects the nature the most, I can see. Or maybe I can see it's actually the extractions of the trees that affects the most. And of course, then I understand a little bit more of my product. And I understand if I want to look on a strategic planning, what should I do for the future? Maybe I should ask the workers in the forest to change to biodiesel. Maybe the best is to change for, for, from a fossil fuel to a biodiesel to make my furniture less environmental, to make them environmental fr more friendly. This is something, probably you don't think about that when you look, look at the furniture. How should I do my furniture? I'm starting to think about inside my industry what to do. I have to put on a filter or something like that. No, it's actually to switch from from uh, feed fuel in the forest. And of course, then you may be as a, a buyer of uh, wood. Please, I want to make my uh, industry more clean, to sell my furniture as more clean. Please change to biodiesel. I want to buy green, uh, green, green wood, and this, this green wood has to be used by biodiesel when cutting them. <laughs> I'm just making some ideas, how to think. Product development and improvement. But what I have seen, that if you involve green thinking earlier in the development and improvement part process, easy and to do it afterwards. This is something that I have, a conclusion that I have, that I have drawn. Those two that I worked with equal design for a long time. It's easier to do it early than after. And of course public policy making. And as well marketing. So this is what you have to do in the Google and School definition. Google and context, intended application, which is the product, which is the audience. Sometimes it's public, sometimes it's just internal. It's our, it's our management group at the University of Urfarenne that want to know, or Petrobras that want to know. And I maybe just want to learn more about the environment I have been voting for uh, the Green Party so long time now, so I have to think about a little bit more what's happening in my industry. School by model modeling requirements. Design an initial general flow chart of the system to be studied. I think you are doing some, are you doing some pro product system studies in mechanical engineering? You have, a, when you have a product, how it has to flow in the I'll industry. Do what I can. Yeah? I'll do the document. Are you not, 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 not like, like product in, for product in the area. They are of course starting in the flow, inside yeah. the internal flow. And that's where you are doing in some... The, in the five year, year oh. yeah. yeah, in the last year of Yeah. So, what to be done is to design an initial general flow shot of the system to be done. This was a little bit of this. But of course, you have much more boxes in reality. Where are the system borders? Of course, is 
we are just interested in the greenhouse effect. Then we just look on data that are connected to the greenhouse effect. Maybe. And it's quality. For example, you can measure, you can look in books that this process normally pollutes two kilograms of carbon dioxide per unit. But this is not so exact. Of course, measurement is the best, but sometimes we don't have any measurements. How, how to calculate? Then we have to think about the data quality, and of course, a lot of statistics. Sometimes, maybe the, the data change so much so that they can affect the result. So statistics is an important tool which impact categories and which method of impact assessment ought to be used. So there's a lot of things that we have to think about. Functional unit. The functional unit corresponds to a reference flow to which all, all other model flows of the system are related. So if you look at the case of one kilogram of clean laundry, this is the washing machine. Then it goes out one kilogram of clean laundry. Then this will be a reference flow. <coughs> then we can start to calculate all other flows. Transport, production of the detergent, maybe you have different, different chemicals. So if you have one kilogram, maybe you have 0.2 kilograms to be transported. Maybe you have 0.1 or something, 0.25 or 1.5, and also an outflow of some pollution. So then you can calculate everything. How much you go out? to the way to the tree. So you use this one kilogram of clean laundry to calculate all other things. So therefore the functional unit is, is critical. <coughs> if by the study that you were wrong with that. But if it is if you just study one product process, of course, then you can choose what you want to do.
Let me tell you guys some more about the five kernel units. They are sending some students to us to follow to follow courses in uh, resource recovery. And we are sending students to them, for example, to work together to the both sides. Yeah. You have the uh, well, problems. Yeah, actually it's a Swedish program that I'm funded by. It's, it's called the Neos Kalman. Kalman is actually dedicated to two famous Swedes. Karl von Lenné was the guy that created uh, the organization of all the uh, vegetables. And you already know that there are two Latin names. Every flower, every animal are two Latin names. It was actually that guy that created it. That was a political guy. So, and then I created a foundation that is called the News Palmer in the memory of that. And they found, and uh, they are founding students and teachers by a Swedish foundation. So, the, so I'm paid by this, and Angelo is also paid by this. So it's actually a process when it starts with the planning trip, after it's a teacher exchange, and if the application succeed, it will be also student exchange. And then I found everything, traveling cars, accommodation itself. So this we have with the uh, welfare daughter, this uh, we have started with the uh, welfare land too. But it's, it's, it's like this, it's very much related to, uh, because we have uh, also other types of international collaboration, but depending on that, uh, Sustainability is so critical, and I think the year is so important in sustainability. We have thought of it. it is. But it can be a post logistics or production or construction or something else. But I have personally mainly been involved in sustainability. Otherwise, of course, I'm an engineer. <coughs> but this is for engineer. Professor Han, I, I think it's enough for today. And you will return with this platform on next week. We would like to explain about the lecture. And please. Uh, you can start to think about this. Okay, you can, you can. You have it on the Dropbox. Start to think about how to compare this. Then we meet the next time. And we will have a good discussion. Tell me, was it hard with English? 
subjects understandable at least a little. <laughs> Thank you.